All right. I think we're here. Uh, good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning, uh, or good afternoon, depending on where you are. If you're on the East Coast, uh, thanks for joining me at noon at lunch. Uh, this is Trade Show Guy Monday morning coffee. And I've got coffee here. In fact, I've got my, uh, hang on, I got to stop this screen share thing, this little slide, what you might call it, and show, um, where is it? There it is. All right. Got my, my Beatles love. Cirque du Soleil coffee cup, which I got in Vegas several years ago. I didn't have time to go see the show, uh, maybe this summer, but I did make time and money to go get the coffee cup. So there you go. Uh, yeah, like I say, good morning. Uh, welcome to another trade show guy, Monday morning coffee. I'm Tim Patterson. This is the time and place where I sit down in front of the camera and computer and discuss the state of the world or my world, the trade show world or, or something like that. That's it's, you know, we're still trying to feel our way through this. is kind of fun. I had a guest last week, Mike Duisberg, who was great. He was fun. Uh, you, if you haven't seen it, you should go check it out. It's on the blog, tradeshowguyblog.com. In any, any event, I, I really appreciate you joining me, uh, whether it's live or whether you're watching the replay on the blog. Um, it's kind of fun to get in front of a microphone. I, I did this for, you know, 25 years for my career in radio. And so sitting down in front of a mic is always, always a guess. Uh, I'm the founder and owner of Trade Show Guy Exhibits, uh, which is a company that works with clients who are looking to upgrade their trade show presence, uh, increase their trade show marketing return on investment, you know, make a bigger splash at the shows that they attend and exhibit at. I've been in the industry just shy of 15 years. So this is my, my I've had two careers. It's, uh, it's, it's cool. And I, I intend to do this for another, you know, 10 years, make it two 25 year careers before I go hike off into the woods and, and never come back. Uh, last five and a half years as owner of this company, we've worked with clients such as Bob's Red Mill, uh, Dave's Killer Bread, Betterment LLC, Maduri Farms, Earth Mom, Angel Baby, So Young, and many, many more. Done boosts for them, upgrades, all sorts of stuff. We tend to have a lot of clients in the natural products industry, although, you know, we're certainly not limited to that. I mentioned this. Because I was thinking yesterday when I'm doing show notes that we, we don't often spend enough time tooting our horn. And I'm a little shy about that anyway. I'm just not the kind of guy who normally says, hey, look at me. Uh, look what I'm doing. I'm, I'm, you know, I'm kind of like in the background guy. I'm like the producer versus the, the guy in, the, the, uh, the, in front of the camera. But uh, I'm in front of the camera now, in front of the microphone. I wrote and published a book uh, about a year and a half ago. Not quite that. Uh, late 19, uh, late 2015. Called Trade Show Success: Fourteen Proven Steps to Take Your Trade Show Marketing to the Next Level. Uh, I wasn't trying to write a bestseller by any stretch of the imagination. In fact, uh, far from it. I was really writing it as a way of increasing my visibility and credibility uh, in the marketplace. As a direct result, I can point to at least a few new clients, you know, which have come on board. And it has also led me to uh, led to a feature article and an interview in the trade show industry. Main magazine, Exhibitor magazine, that was in November issue about me and the book and my exper expertise in the marketplace. And that was a, uh, a really cool deal. I didn't expect that at all. That was a lot of fun. You know, I had a goal to write a second book uh, because I was told somewhere along the way that if you really want to promote your first book, you should write a second book. That gives you more credibility. And, and then you had the first one because, you know, readers will then see you as a more valid author. Uh, however, uh, since I put so much of what I know about the trade show industry into that book, um, you know, I, I've been a little hard pressed to come up with a really solid idea for the second trade show industry book. I've had a couple of ideas and they would take a lot of work and I think, yeah, okay, man, I could do that. I could do that. I could do that. Uh, but I haven't settled on it yet. Um, so we'll see what happens. I have an idea or two. Uh, it says I haven't settled on it. I keep thinking, well, maybe I should write a more general business book about X or Y or Z, but then I think, well, gosh, good grief, there are a dozen business books published every day, so <laughs> still thinking about it. Okay, so I uh, had a fun time uh, last week. I did a photo shoot for some headshots. Uh, I've been wanting to do this for a while. I think I did this about 20 or 25 years ago, so it's been a long time. Um, I belong to a networking group up in the Portland area called Tip Club. And one of the members is uh, Kelly Mooney. And she and I finally worked out a, an arrangement. And we, we had like five different appointments to make this happen. And because of the weather and the ice and the Portland had in, in December and January, it didn't happen until last week. 
Uh, but she's very professional, very good, and I saw the proofs, and I'm really excited about them. So that was a lot of fun doing a photo shoot. So if you're watching me on LinkedIn at all, uh, we'll have new photos there in the next uh, week or two. That'll be that'll be a lot of fun. Also, want to talk about before I get to like you know the tip of the week or whatever. Uh, customer service. One of my experiences with customer service happened recently. Um, I had um, I guess a pulley go out on my engine. Uh, didn't know what it was, making weird noise about a block from home. I, I get home, there's smoke coming out of the, the the hood, and I'm going, oh, God, what is it? But it's late at night. I can't do anything about it. It's dark. So I figure, well, I'll deal with it first thing in the morning. Get out there, and I take a look at it and go, oh, it looks okay. Well, let me just start it up and see what happens. I start it up. The engine goes, vroom, 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 pop. I hear a pop, and I stop the engine, go around and look. And the little serpentine belt, you know, the one that runs everything, is broken. Uh, I pull it out. Okay, what do I do? The belt broke. So I figured, well, uh, I just had it replaced at Oil Can Henry's a couple of months ago. So it's a, almost a brand new belt. So maybe I'll call them up. I call them up. I say, hey, uh, this belt broke. Can you guys fix it? Is it covered by warranty? And they said, yeah, sure. Just bring it in. So I think, well, okay, I'll call AAA. Uh, they, they come over. They haul my car up there which is only a couple of miles, the guys, uh, you know, unload the car. They take a look at it and say, hey, you have a pulley of a, of a, of a, a bearing that failed. We'll go next door and get you one. They're, they're just across the street from a, uh, an auto parts shop. So they run over there, put the bearing in. takes like 15 minutes for the whole thing. No charge. The AAA thing, of course, that's all covered. And I'm, thinking, it, it, I'm thinking to myself, I, I said, do, do you got? Do I owe you anything? No, not at all. Uh, not even for the the poly. No, not at all. Just take it. We'll we'll see you later. And I'm thinking to myself, you know, will I ever go anywhere else to get my oil changed again? That's that's really good customer service. They took care of it. They didn't worry about how much it cost. Might have cost them ten or fifteen bucks or plus the time, which wasn't much time. But I think that is how you do customer service. And they did it all with a smile and they jumped on it. I was I was really impressed. So. Uh, a little more uh, company business. Oddly enough, I ended up having to redo my website, my Trade Show Guy Exhibits website last week, unexpectedly, unplanned. On uh, Tuesday morning, I think it was, I was on the site, tradeshowguyexhibits.com, and there was something goofy about the way the, the top looked. There's logos usually there in the middle. It was, uh, and then the, the navigation bar is right below that, and for whatever reason, the logo was off to the left, and... The navigation bar was like laying on top of it. It looked really bad. I thought, well, I got to go in and fix this. So I, I get inside and I start trying to change it and I can't get it changed. The next thing I know, the, the, the front page has got sections in it, you know, top section, middle section, bottom section. What, there's like seven or eight sections in there. And the top section disappears. I'm going, what's going on? What's going on? So I, I, I can't figure it out. I can't get it back no matter what I do. I've got no website and a fair amount of traffic comes there and, and I track that and I need to know <laughs> what's going on. Send off a request to the support team of this, a WordPress site. And I'm using a theme, works really well. And in the meantime, uh, I belong to a, a, a mastermind group with uh, Peter Shankman called Shank Minds. And I thought, well, let me just throw out to them, what kind of theme would you suggest for a small company? And I get three or four suggestions right away, like within a couple of minutes. And I check out a couple of them. I go, ooh, this is nice. I like this. And a couple of guys really raved about it. So I thought, well, okay. And it turns out I already have a membership to the to the site where the theme would have normally cost me like 99 bucks. So I download it and I start playing with it. And I think this is exactly what I need. It's a drag and drop. You can apply this. And anyway, so uh, it took me the rest of Tuesday, all day, Wednesday, and part of Thursday to get the site back to where I wanted it. There's still work to be done on it, but for the most part, uh, it looks pretty good the way I want it to be. There's still some tweaking to go, but I did not want to do that. I didn't want to spend two and a half days working on a website, but it looks pretty good, to be honest. So, uh, uh, The blog, uh, by the way, tradeshowguyblog.com. I wrote a blog post last week because January is uh, an anniversary of that blog. I think the first post actually was December of 2008, but I really didn't get started with blogging and making it a regular deal until January of 2009. So that's been eight years now. So uh, I, I thought, well, I've never done a state of the blog. So I thought, well, let me just find some figures about traffic and this and that and uh, just some fun stuff. And so I, I wrote this blog, uh, probably one of the longer pieces I've done. Um, you know, I, I, and I've published since, you know, January 
2009, I've published over 600 posts and videos and podcasts and so on. Uh, in the post, I discuss how I believe that the blog has led directly to people finding me and becoming clients. And it has happened. People have called me and, and or emailed me and said, hey, I found your blog. You look like you know what you're talking about. We need help. Uh, that happens. I wish I could say it happens on a regular basis. I wish I could say uh, more accurately that if I write something about X, that someone's going to find it. It just doesn't work that way. But it does help get me out in the marketplace. It uh, keeps my presence online active. And, and we know how to, important it is because people look for stuff online. They, they, you know, you wish they would, you could say, well, I'm going to call my buddy who I met at the uh, trade show in, in, you know, uh, Las Vegas in July, who hit, who they use for a booth, uh, exhibit company, but that's not what happens. They look online because that's easier. Uh, and you can browse all sorts of stuff. So when people look for, you know, trade show custom booth or whatever they're looking for online, uh, you want them to be able to find you. And there's, of course, a lot of people out there, a lot of blogs in the industry, uh, and there's some good ones out there. Um, but people find me, and so it does lead to business. Um, I can I can safely say that uh, over half of our business last year from the company came from people finding me online. So I know it's very significant. It's just not a it's not a push button thing. You can't say I'm going to do this. I'm going to get this. It's just not the way that works. Uh, this week, you know, I've mentioned previously in these chats, I've been paying attention to podcasts recently more than I used to. Uh, it, mainly, it's because I've been skiing a lot as much as I can. And it's a long drive to the ski resort. So I have, you know, a couple of hours there and back to listen to stuff. Um, I've been listening to the Unpodcast from Scott and Allison Stratton. It's a bit crazy. It's about marketing, uh, sometimes over the top, but uh, usually it has good information and it isn't all that long and it's, it's not hard to digest. I uh, also listen to a couple of episodes of Chris Gillibo's Side Hustle School podcast. And if you look for Side Hustle, uh, you'll also find a Side Hustle show by Nick Loper and his website, Side Hustle Nation. Side Hustle, I never heard the term until a, a few weeks ago, but Chris has been doing this. Chris does the, um, uh, in in, in uh, Portland, he does the World Domination Summit, which I've been to a couple times in like July uh, in Portland uh, that attracts like 1,500 people. It's it's a pretty big deal. It's, it's a lot of fun, but that's, that's Chris. Uh, he's also a guy who's made his name by, uh, traveling using travel hacking techniques to get you know cheap and free travel uh, using points on cars and this and that and the other to go to virtually every country in the world and he started doing this several years ago and he blogged about it and that's how I, I ran across him also listen to the uh, New Yorker radio hour podcast ton of great comment uh, content on that covering politics and culture and and so much at such a high level if you know what the New Yorker magazine is like you know exactly what the New Yorker radio uh, hour podcast would be. Also on, on my playlist on occasion, the TED radio hour, Radio Lab, uh, Sound Opinions was a good one. Heard a great interview with uh, this past weekend with Esperanza Spalding, the great jazz bassist, writer, vocalist. Uh, also been listening a lot to the Majority Report, Sam Cedar, that, you know, it's my political fix. I listened to the How to Succeed podcast, which is a podcast uh, produced and hosted by a Sandler system sales trainer. Always good stuff for uh, business people, especially those that are involved in sales and bringing in business to the company. Also uh, have a lot of fun with a guy named Chris Ducker, uh, who is big in the online uh, industry, like in just, uh, internet business, that sort of thing. Youpreneur. Entrepreneur, only you printer with Chris Ducker. Also, Golden Eagle Podcast, the Modern Drummer Podcast. I'm a drummer, so I listen to that on occasion. It's a lot of fun. Uh, but the one I tell you that I really enjoyed this weekend most was an hour-long interview with Martin Landau. Remember him from Mission Impossible years ago? He's also been in Crimes and Misdemeanors, and he was in uh, Ed Wood. Great actor. He turned 88 last year. He was on the WTF Podcast with Mark Maron, hosted by actor, comedian, and uh, writer Mark Maron. Now, I've always been a fan of Martin Landau. Frankly, I uh, haven't heard his name for a while. I'd, I was a little surprised to find out he was still alive at 88, but glad to hear that. Um, it was great to hear because he went on he went on link. I mean, this is an hour, hour and 20 minute uh, interview with Martin Landau on the WTF podcast with Mark Marin. And uh, so I would, you know, it was just cool to hear him talk about acting and some of the stories about his, the old days, how he got into acting. He was actually an illustrator for the New York Daily News when he was a teenager and very good as an illustrator, and could have made a career out of that, but 
then he discovered acting and he said, I have to do that. That guy on stage is no good. He's a friend of mine. He's a great guy, but he's no good. I can do better than that. It was a fascinating story. Uh, and, and, and the craft fascinates me. I'm not an actor. I've never done it. But the craft of acting is very fascinating. And uh, it was a very entertaining conversation. Uh, as for podcasting, the trade show guy, uh, Monday Morning Coffee, I'm still undecided, but I think uh, I'm edging closer to it. Uh, I just have to investigate a little further how it's done today. See, I did podcasting five, six, seven, eight, nine years ago for several years. Um, even had a, um, even created a, a, a program, a, a, I guess a, a product teaching people how to podcast in the early days when you had to get the, the RSS feed and all this stuff. I think now you do it more automatically, but uh, it's been a long time. And so I'd have to figure out how it's supposed to be done today. Um, anyway, so business, uh, I'm deep in the weeds on three projects we're doing right now, all three making their debut at Expo West in Anaheim in about a month and a half. Lots of details, mainly about getting graphics submitted in a timely manner and choices like what color are laminates and things like that, types of crates or cases for shipping and so on and so forth. More on those as we get there. I'm not going to talk about them until they're you know, on the floor and, and we can take pictures of them and get those out on the blog. Uh, but let's talk about logistics for a minute. Um, you know, it's not a favorite subject of trade show managers. They'd rather talk about the creative innovative of the, of the pre-show marketing, the meeting people, all that. But logistics, hey, they're very important. Without a handle on your trade show logistics, uh, things tend to fall apart. Uh, you know, shipping, setup, dismantle, so on and so forth, they really can entail lots of money. And when you spend a lot of money, there are opportunities to save significant amounts of money. Uh, or waste it if you kind of let things slip. So let's throw in a few tips. Number one, shipping. Uh, get at least three quotes. If you have a typical shipper that you work with and you're comfortable with and you're you're continuing to do that and you're comfortable with how they handle things, uh, that know all about trade show marketing, you know, you probably want to stick with them. But if you're not, let's take a look at how many different avenues you possibly could go. Uh, so get some, get some uh, quotes. Shipping costs can vary greatly. The better hand you'll have on your shipping costs, the more you can save there. Uh, check to see if you can really save by shipping to the show's advanced warehouse. Typically, you can, from what I understand, but also some clients say, you know, I, I don't save by doing that. So ask a lot of questions when it comes to shipping direct to the advanced warehouse versus, uh, which, you know, like a week or two before the show or shipping to the show site. Kind of depends on the size of the show and the logistics of the show, the in and out what timing you have, how how much control you have over the actual delivery of it. If you do the advanced warehouse, chances are you have more control and they're going to deliver it in a timely manner. Uh, but check it out. Uh, watch for hidden charges. You know, those can come in in any shape. A drayage, the cost of transporting material to your booth from the front door if you have someone else doing it. Like cleaning, vacuuming, uh, all the extra services, internet, uh, electricity, everything check it out. Be very aware of what you're spending money on and what you need and what are extras that you really maybe don't need. So logistics are that sort of so show site. Uh, also, IND known as installation and dismantle. Lots of traps here. Beware of the rules of the specific venues you're going to exhibit at um, and, and know what you can and can't do at those various places. Uh, for instance, can you use a tool if you're the exhibitor or do you have to hire a show services labor person to do that? Uh, last summer, I was involved in the setup of a booth at the McCormick Place in Chicago, and we had hired a, a crew to install the booth, but they were not allowed to touch the audio-visual equipment. We had to actually hire a different crew to make that happen. So it uh, had to be a separate labor crew. So check with your IND crew or check with so show services or with your exhibit house to make sure you're asking all the questions uh, that should be asked so nothing slips through the cracks, what it really boils down to. All right. So about ready to wrap up here, I always like to do one good thing. Uh, you know, in the past, I've done music, books. I've shared a podcast you too is the one good thing. Uh, this week, it's not a product, though. It's that thing you do that makes you feel like you, like a whole person. It makes you feel the way you're supposed to me to feel. Uh, for me, it's skiing. Uh, I've been skiing since I was six or seven years old, so we're talking a long time. Uh, it's, it's second nature. It's like Zen. That's what I do. I like to ski fast. I like to ski hard uh, at my age. I, st I still do it. I still am faster than most guys on the hill, but that's what I do. I love skiing. You know, I also love hiking. I have a bicycle that I, I, that I haven't had a bike in five years and I got one last fall and I'm, I'm doing that during the, the spring and summer and fall. 
Uh, but when winter's around, I'm up on the hill as much as I can be. So whatever it is that makes you feel great, feel whole, uh, feel yourself, helps you unplug from all the connections you have in life and just are, are yourself, that's the one good thing. Whatever that is, make sure you do it. And with that, I bid you a good week. So be sure to join me next week. Same time, same station. You can go to tradeshowguywebinar.com uh, to get your friends to sign up or sign up a friend and uh, join me on the Trade Show Guy Monday morning coffee. Have a great week.